Okay, everyone, we should be recording. So hello, uh, just wanted to take a few minutes of your time today uh, and tell you about something that I've been working on for all of you guys as my as leaders in our organization. So I asked a few weeks ago about what are some things that maybe would help you um, become a better leader or that you wanted to learn or that you struggle with or concerns that you have uh, in, in your role as a leader. And the answers were, uh, they varied greatly. And I appreciate all of the time that you took to answer that question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sprinkling some information along here and there um, in this group page uh, so that you guys can always come back and look at some things. So being a leader isn't always easy, guys. <laughs> it's not, and that's the truth of the matter. Uh, a couple of things I want, to, I want to say right away, right off the bat is remember this. You do not have to be perfect to be powerful. You do not have to be perfect to be powerful, but you do need to be present. So I have prepared a couple of little notes that I wanted to make because I have like all of this stuff in my head and sometimes it's hard for me to, to make sense of it and remember all of the things. So I will also try to summarize some of this um, and put it in writing because for me, sometimes I, it's for things to sink in, I need to hear them, see them, read them, absorb them, touch them. I learn in multiple different ways. And so if anyone else is like that, the video I hope will help. I also hope that putting some of the things in writing, if you can read them, for some reason they kind of stick a little bit better. So as we go through um, these little sprinkles of director refresh, um, Keep that in mind. I'm going to be adding more information and it's open for discussion. So if you have ideas on a certain topic or you know, if as I'm putting information out there, if you have something to add of value, please comment in the comments as well. So I, I first wanted to start with what is leadership? And so I looked up what the definition was and, and leadership is the act of guiding a team or individuals to achieve a certain goal through direction and motivation. Leaders encourage others to take actions they need to succeed or to be successful. To be a great leader, it is necessary to learn and cultivate the skills it takes to become an effective leader. Okay, great. That's a great definition, but really what does it mean to us and in our business? Um, and so I dove a little bit deeper and I, cause I really wanted to make sure that we have a clear understanding as what it is, is our job as um, director, star director and super star directors. And one of the biggest things that I have seen in my years as a Sensi leader is, um, well, I'm just gonna say it, power trips micromanaging the boss mentality, okay? I apologize for that. We cannot mistake the two, okay? We cannot mistake the fact that in this job, in this position that we hold as leaders, we are not bosses. And it's a fine line. And sometimes, especially if you've come from a position, maybe in a different um, occupation where you were a manager, a supervisor, or a boss of some sort, it is kind of difficult. Um, I apologize. Let me just put that on do not disturb. Um, it's difficult sometimes to draw the line in the sand. Let me see if I can pause this. Okay, so I apologize for that interruption. That is, you know, another thing that we uh, have to learn when we're in this job is that <laughs> we work from home. People think that you're always available. So I am now on do not disturb. So I apologize. Let me try to get back on track. Okay. So micromanaging, being a boss, a, a supervisor in other positions, it's sometimes hard to draw the line in the sand. Okay. So am I in my role as a leader? What is my job? Do I tell them people what to do? How do I, how do I tell the difference between a supervisor's position and a leadership position? And I'm hoping that as we go through this little, this process that we can really um, figure that out. So one of the things that I, I find that's really important is micromanaging, right? How do we, how do we not micromanage, but yet give instruction or tips and advice and things that people can do. And I guess what we need to really understand is that you can put the ideas out there. You can encourage people to do them, but you can't say, hey, have you done this? And something that's really important is 
as a leader, you can't just show up at the, you know, towards the end of the month and say, hey, how are your sales? If you've had no communication with that person and or that team, other than a sales related or a business related conversation, it, they might take it a little bit differently. They might be like, oh, she only really cares about me, if, uh, you know, if I'm making her money. And while that's going to happen, regardless of our actions, sometimes with our best intentions, that happens. It's our job to make sure that we do our best not to let that be our intention, right? So don't micromanage people. Don't be like, you have to do this, this, and this. Now, if someone comes to you and they say, how do I sell? Or I can't get anything. Uh, I can't get people to host parties. Ask them what they have done first. Don't tell them anything. Ask them, what have you done? Who have you reached out to? What did you say? How did you communicate? And then from there, look at the information they've given you and then give your best advice. But don't micromanage me like, okay, send this. Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? You got to kind of find that balance, guys, between micromanaging and leading because it's different. You're a leader in this position. You're a mentor. You're here to inspire, motivate, engage, encourage, not boss. And, and that's a hard, hard thing to differentiate at times. So do your best on that. Um, as leaders, always, and with a sense of culture, we want to be kind and we want to be gracious. Now, there are days, I'm sure all of us can admit, things are a little difficult or we are dealing, sometimes it feels like we've got product that sells out or we've, and we've got a downline that's being difficult and we've got a customer who's unhappy and it always seems to have that trickle effect. It is okay. And I give you permission to step back sometimes and just be like, you know what, today, I need a mental health day. I'm going to take a step back because I may not be in the right frame of mind to be kind, courteous, and gracious today. Also, remember, this is your business and word of mouth will and can, it will. It will definitely travel quickly from customers and teammates. So if you're in that place where maybe you're not in the best um state of mind to be all of those things as a leader and you might say something that you don't want to, don't react right away. It's okay if you've got a, a heated downline situation going on to say to yourself or to them, hey, I'll be back to you um, tomorrow. I'm not available today. They don't need to know that you need to sit on it. You can tell them if you want to be honest. There have been plenty of times where consultants come to me and say, how do I handle this? And I'll be like, I need to think about this. Because you don't want to just react. A lot of people, and I'm guilty of it in life, you know, you react, you react out of feeling. And if you're feeling uh, in this situation as leader is anger or angst or any of those negative feelings, you want to step back because you want to be the best leader possible. And if you need to time, time to digest that and absorb it so that you can handle it the best way possible, then do that. Just remember, you are a mentor. You want people to model what you're doing. So you're leading from the front and everything you do from sales, recruiting, training, how you react to your team, how you treat your team, how you treat your customers. That's why it's important that if time is needed for you to absorb and digest a certain situation that you do it. Um, and I know that that can be hard sometimes, but it is important to kind of keep that, keep it in mind. Again, we're trying to grow more leaders. We're trying to grow our business and grow our team. So if we're not leading from the front, if we're setting examples that are like, oh, you only show up when um, at the end of the month, you only show up when things are easy or things are, you know, business is booming. That's the example as a leader that you're setting. You want to be a consistent leader all of the time. All of the time you wanna be consistent. So that means when things are hard, and I'll give you an example. Let's say we have product that has sold out in minutes and people are upset that they didn't get their product. How you react to that situation should be almost identical to the same that you're gonna react when everybody is happy and everybody got the best sales ever and everybody got the product that they wanted. Some people call it, you know, being overly positive. Well, as a leader, what good is it going to do if you're like, I can't believe I didn't get this product. This is ridiculous. What is Sensi thinking? Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they, what, what, what good does that do for you or your team or your business or your customers or for anybody for that matter? It does nothing. I'm not seeing, I'm not saying be so positive that it's nauseating, 
but it is our job. I believe full heartedly, it is our job to show up in a positive way all of the time. There is always a positive to every negative situation in our lives. We may not always be able to see it right away, but if you look hard enough, it is there. And when it comes to product that sells out quickly, for example, well, I mean, that one's easy for me. Holy crap, we have product that people want that badly. And it's not every superstar director's hoarding product. That is not the case, you guys. There are, that's just not. And you cannot fall into that trap and you can't let your team fall into that trap. So you have to find a way to show them, to open their eyes so that they begin to grow and think more like a leader and a business owner of, yeah, we have product that sells and it stinks that we didn't get the product we want, but there's a hundred other products that you can sell. One product sells out or one launch, one line sells out, like maybe a, a special Easter or Mother's Day collection or bundle. Okay. We got lots of other stuff we can sell you guys. And let's focus on that not on what we didn't get. And I mean, if you're a parent, you probably already do that with your children as well. So it kind of rolls over into this. You also want to make sure that when you're leading your team, I mentioned this earlier, you want to be consistent. You want to stay in the game. Every month, our numbers reset. Every month, regardless of our title, we're a certified consultant. We're at zero, baby. We got to start all over. What are you going to do? Are you going to wait until the 20th day, the 25th day, and then start showing up for your customers and your team? People watch that. People notice that. They know if you're only posting two or three times a month and it's always the same thing at the end of the month. Like, oh, I have a sales goal. Who wants to help me? Or, you know, something along those lines. Stay engaged. Stay in the game. If you work a full-time job outside of Sensi and you have children that are busy, I get it. When I started, I did, I had a very busy schedule. So I had to find ways to make sure I was consistent in my business that worked with my life, right? If you can dedicate 15 minutes a day to show up for your team, then you do that. You make sure that they know you are there. You also want to make sure you, they know that you're out there and you're, what ideas are you doing? How are you engaging with your customers? Are you doing follow-up? How did you get at your new recruit? Where did you get your new recruit? How are you showing up? You can let your team know that. And I don't mean you just have to tell them the information, let them see it. Let them see it in your social media stories. Let them see it in your team page. Let them see it when you're on, when you do a Zoom or a training call that, hey, this week I did this and it worked. Or I did this and it didn't work. So I'm going to tweak it and I'm going to try this. They are looking to you to be inspired and to be motivated and to know that you're there. I've seen far too many leaders in this business make it to a certain spot and they kind of were like, well, I'm here. I don't need to go any further. And they stall. Well, when they do that, so does their team every single time, guaranteed. Unless there's that one person down here that's like, well, I'm not ready to stop. And they take, but the rest of the team stays down here. You guys want to make sure that you're up here and you're bringing your team with you as much as possible. Again, we can't make them do anything, but we can make sure that we're setting the best example possible. Again, like our kids. We teach them, we raise them, we hope that we instill all of the right things in them, but at the end of the day, they are their own person and they will do what they're going to do. The same with your team. But if you want to set up for some sort of failure, don't show up for your team. That's one way to get there. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the being consistent and showing up for your team. Your team is important, you guys. We are a, when we start out, when all of us buy our starter kits, we're a team of one. You cannot advance past the rank of a certified consultant without a team. Remember that. You are where you are because your team helped you get there. Now help them get there and help them teach their teams how to, to build everybody up and pull everybody up with you. Don't leave anybody behind. Make sure your team knows that you value them. You, um, you're grateful and blessed and honored to be the leader of that team. They have to know they're valued, you guys. It's very important. They need to know that um, you are there for them. You care about their business um, and you really want to, you really are invested in helping them. Now, if they choose not to, that's on them. That's not on you. But as long as you've done your job as a great leader and a great mentor, you have nothing to worry about. Um, so I want to just close this, this segment up with being in a leadership position 
it can be overwhelming. I, I mean, it happens to all of us, but don't let it stop you. Don't let it trap you. Maybe take a step back once in a while. Like I mentioned in the very beginning of this and refocus, take a day to think about things. Let me back up for one more second. Cause this just came to me. Comparison. Don't. It's hard. I know. I look at a lot of other women, a lot of other leaders, moms, wives, all of the things. And it's easy to fall into. I wish I was more like her. I wish I did this. I wish I could do that better. Be the best version of you that you can be. If you're doing all of the things properly, meaning you're showing up, you're consistent, you're engaged. It doesn't have to look like how I do it or like any of the other leaders that you follow and since you do it, as long as you're doing it and doing it for you, the best that you can do, you will be fine. And it's easy to get overwhelmed. Ask for help. None of us know everything. I've been doing this for 13 years. I still ask for help and I don't care if it's a certified consultant. That makes no difference to me. If a person has a great idea or is helpful. I don't care what rank or how long they've been in this business. They still have value to add to my life, to my business. And I respect their, their help and their opinions. So don't think that if you're a director, you can't reach in your downline and ask for help because you certainly can. Maybe somebody's super great at Excel. I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not afraid to ask for help. And I'm not afraid to ever admit my mistakes because I am human. And as a leader, you want your team to know you don't know it all, but you'll do your best to find out the answer. You'll do your best to be there. You'll do your best to learn and grow so that you can help them learn and grow. And that's really all that we can ever ask for. And I started off when I said this in the very beginning of the call, I'm going to end with it. You do not have to be perfect to be powerful, you guys, but you do have to show up. So this was video one in our new um, leadership refresh. I hope it was helpful for you. Stay tuned for more things to come down um, sprinkle in, trickle in a little bit. I hope that um, I hear from you guys. If you have any questions or comments or ideas of how to deal with maybe a difficult downline or a difficult customer, put it in the chat below because again, this is how we become better is by learning from each other. So have a great day. We'll chat soon, everyone. Bye-bye.